I am Johnny Massacre and welcome to the Johnny Massacre Show. This is the Friday Night Massacre. On tonight's show, Russia amass troops on the Ukraine border. But why? In other news, Elon Musk's Neuralink prepares to test microchips in the human brain. Also, Israel is now number one in daily COVID cases per capita, even though fucking everyone is boosted up the wazoo. And finally, Meatloaf dies, Netflix stock crumbles, and the new Batman movie is three hours long. Who's fucking with me? Give me a hell yeah! So, this is big news. Russia are amassing troops on the Ukraine border, and you should probably know what the fuck is going on. Biden came out the other day and gave a soft message to Russia, kind of saying if they invade, then America might not do anything. And because Biden obviously isn't in control of the USA, whoever is controlling the USA, because Biden can't get through a sentence, he's got Alzheimer's, whoever is controlling the USA, Biden's puppet masters kind of sent the message downstairs to Biden's handlers. And now they're trying to backpedal. And basically America are saying to Russia, uh, no, if you invade Ukraine, bad things are going to happen. Have a look at this. MSN say, Blinken warns any Russian invasion of Ukraine would be met with a severe and united response. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken warned that any Russian invasion of Ukraine would be met with a severe and united response following his meeting Friday with Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. The latest round of diplomatic talks that Blinken said provided a clearer path of understanding each other's concerns. Blinken's meeting came with Lavrov two days after President Joe Biden muddled the U.S. message of severe consequences for Russia, saying at a press conference that a minor incursion might not trigger the same response from NATO as an invasion. So now now America are walking that back and they're playing 4D chess with Russia, not out and out saying if you invade Ukraine, we're going to fucking nuke you bastards like we should have done in the Cold War, but tacitly saying Russia, well, we might have to get involved. I mean, this is kind of World War Three shit. It's going to be interesting to see what happens. That's for sure. Now, why the fuck is Putin doing this? That is the question. Yahoo News explain a bit. They say... The reason why Putin wants to invade Ukraine firstly is because of history. With the 1991 breakup of the Soviet Union, Russia lost control of 14 former republics it had previously dominated. But the loss of Ukraine was the bitterest pill. The two countries speak closely related languages. Many Russians feel a connection with Ukraine that they do not feel towards other Soviet states. So, quite simply, Russia and Ukraine kind of similar, so let's fucking invade them and steal everything. That's one of the reasons why Russia are amassing troops on their border. Another reason is because of geopolitics. They say, since the Cold War ended, NATO has expanded eastwards by taking in 14 new countries, including the states of the former Warsaw Pact and the three Baltic nations that were once in the Soviet Union. So NATO is much more friendly to the United States, and they're kind of taking over Russia's territory or places near Russia, at least. Therefore, Russia saw this as a threatening encroachment towards its borders. Ukraine is not a NATO member, but has a promise dating from 2008 that it will eventually get to join. Since toppling a pro-Russian president in 2014, that's not very good. Ukraine toppling a pro-Russian president when Putin is going to be president forever. You can't have that democratic shit on your border. Therefore, Ukraine has moved closer to the West and even staged joint military exercises with NATO and taken delivery of weapons from the US, Javelin and anti-tank missiles included. So, yeah, America slowly encroaching upon Russia. That is one reason why Russia wants to basically invade Kiev. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens here. I'm of the opinion that in the modern era, you basically can't have a serious war Otherwise, everyone's going to launch nukes and everyone's going to die. But my guess is as good as yours. I will keep you posted. But you need to know Russia are amassing troops on the Ukraine border. United States wheeling back Alzheimer's Biden's soft touch, stating that maybe America wouldn't intervene so much. And now saying, yes, America will intervene. And also, I read today that the UK is sending over loads of weapons to Ukraine. And God save the Queen was trending over in Ukraine on the Twitters. So... You're fucking welcome, Ukraine. 
Next in news for tonight, Elon Musk's Neuralink prepares to test microchips in the human brain. So this is basically planting artificial intelligence in your brain so you can do things with your mind, such as move things around on a screen or potentially type stuff. This article reads like an excerpt from a science fiction book by William Gibson. It's fucking incredible. Check this out. Over on the times.co.uk, they say Elon Musk's Neuralink prepares to test microchips in human brains. Firm says device will help paralyze people control phones with their mind. Mate, already, already. I mean, that would be amazing, controlling your phone. If you can control your phone with your mind, the phone could therefore control your mind with the phone. And if Facebook's in charge, they're going to fucking throw you in prison for daring to even be attracted to a woman, which will be called a microaggression once we're all hooked up to Neuralink. But thank God Elon Musk is not woke because at least with his interface, you're not going to get punished in communist fashion. The article says Elon Musk is one step closer to getting inside your mind. His ambitious venture Neuralink has signaled that it is preparing to launch clinical trials that will implant artificial intelligence microchips into human brains. The health tech venture has advertised for a clinical trial director based in Fremont, California to work closely with some of the most innovative doctors and top engineers, as well as working with Neuralink's first clinical trial participants. No clue is provided about when the human tests are to beginning. Mate, you're going to get paid so much money for this medical trial. You're going to see an advert online on Instagram and you're going to apply and you're going to get so much money. Imagine how much money you're going to get for having a fucking chip implanted into your brain as a test subject. Sign me up for that shit. Money's tight. The article says... Neuralink has been developing a fully implanted wireless high channel count brain machine interface, BMI. The goal is to enable people with paralysis to directly use their neural activity to operate computers and mobile devices with speed and ease, according to the firm, which Musk co-founded in 2016. The billionaire entrepreneur has previously claimed that Neuralink devices could one day enable superhuman cognition, help paralyze people to operate smartphones or robotic limbs with their minds and solve autism and schizophrenia. I mean, that is a real fucking article. This is really happening. Incredible stuff. Superhuman cognition. This means that we'll probably be able to upload skills into the brain like they upload into Neo's brain in the Matrix. I'm not even kidding. This could really fucking happen. If this happens, it would really narrow the skill gap for everyone. I mean, I could be as good as Lionel Messi. If you can program all this stuff into the brain... It would just come down to how lucky you are genetically with your DNA having the best fitness. I don't think your brain will count for much anymore in terms of football if they allow footballers to use this in the next 50 years. Being able to solve autism and schizophrenia, this is fucking incredible stuff. I hope that shit's true. Helping paralyze people. And if it can help paralyze people do all this stuff, imagine what it can do to a regular human being, how smart it can make you. I mean, you'd be able to cheat on so many birds. Anyways, moving on to the next article. Israel, number one in daily COVID cases per capita. Yeah, get your booster because when you get it, COVID's going to spread everywhere. Yes, yes. Israel, number one in daily COVID cases per capita. According to Times of Israel, starting next Thursday, students to take antigen tests twice a week at home. Why though? Why? I thought we need vaccine passports. I thought that tells us when someone doesn't have corona, right? A what? Everyone's got a vaccine in Israel and everyone's still getting corona. So now we have to take antigen tests to actually find out if we really have corona. What is the point of vaccine passports then? Hmm. Total control from unelected bureaucrats. The article says Israel is leading the world in daily COVID-19 cases per capita. Literally leading the world in COVID cases per capita. Now, the reason I bring you this really boring news is because of this. Politics UK tweeted, Israel currently has the highest cases of COVID-19 per capita with over 60,000 cases per day, despite mask mandates and a fourth jab. Please, please, can we stop? Can we stop with these mask mandates and boosters and fourth shots and fifth shots because Israel has all of that shit and it has the highest COVID case rates in the world. So stop with this shit. Stop delaying the inevitable. Everyone has a vaccine who's been offered it. So stop with this shit for fuck's sake. These draconian measures 
are not stopping the spread of coronavirus in other places too. Ian MSC on Twitter says hospitalizations in San Francisco have reached a new high with mask mandates, vaccine passports and world leading vaccination rates. Not only are 95% of 65 plus year olds vaccinated, nearly 80% have had a booster. And look at this graph. Look at this graph. The orange line is how many people have had one dose. The blue line is how many people have had a booster, 80%, mask mandates, vaccine passports, and you've got highest hospitalizations per 1 million ever. You cannot stop a disease. You cannot stop a disease. We've tried to stop it more than we should have done already. And I honestly feel at this point, it's diminishing returns in all the things the government are trying to do to stave this off. And you're actually going to make things worse. The more of these draconian rules you have, the more of a net negative you're going to make in the long run. Now it's just doing more harm than good, in my personal opinion. I am Johnny Masker, and if you're just joining us, we're discussing Russia amassing troops on the border of Ukraine, Elon Musk's Neuralink, Israel topping the world in COVID cases. But if you've been watching from the beginning, stop your grinning and drop your linen, donate some cash, and let's keep winning. Streamlabs.com forward slash Johnny Masker. The more you donate, the more of these videos you're going to get. Click the link in the description box below. Lan has tipped $100. Happy Lunar New Year of the Tiger, Johnny. Keeping up the great work, but take care of yourself. $100 amazing land you keep me alive we have got only 10 days to go to make 475 dollars if we do that i'll hit the thousand dollar target and i'm gonna break even this month and i can pay my rent so dear lords please please give me the strength and good health to keep making these episodes monday to friday keep doing a cheeky live stream every thursday night and i know i'll get what is coming to me and that that will only be good things thank you moving on to the next piece of news meatloaf has died so meatloaf is a legendary singer and he's a legacy artist over on spin.com they have the news meatloaf bat out of hell singer dies at 74 years old the legendary rocker died late thursday evening there he is oh giving you the finger meatloaf the legendary singer, best known for his theatrical style of rock, has died at the age of 74. The artist's family confirmed the news in a statement posted to his Facebook page early Friday morning. No cause of death was given. So let's have a look at this man's Wikipedia intro because it tells you quite a lot about him. Michael Lee Addy, a day, better known as Meatloaf was an American singer and actor. He was noted for his powerful, wide-ranging voice and theatrical live shows. Yes, he had a very operatic voice. He had an amazing range. Meatloaf sure could fucking sing. His Bat Out of Hell trilogy, Bat Out of Hell, Bat Out of Hell 2, Back Into Hell, and Bat Out of Hell 3, The Monster Is Loose, has sold more than 65 million albums worldwide. More than four decades after its release, the first album still sells an estimated 200,000 copies annually and stayed on the charts for over nine years, making it one of the best-selling albums in history. After the commercial success of Bad Out of Hell and Bad Out of Hell 2, Back Into Hell, and earning a Grammy for Best Solo Rock Vocal Performance for the song I'd Do Anything For Love, Meatloaf nevertheless experienced some difficulty establishing a steady career within the United States. This did not stop him from becoming one of the best-selling music artists of all time, with worldwide sales of more than 100 million records. Basically, he was really fucking popular in Europe and England. You are welcome, Meatloaf. I remember... This guy for that song, I'd Do Anything For Love. That was at number one for like eight or nine weeks in England. I remember there was this show and on the show, people started mocking the song because they got so tired of it with, the, with all due respect. And people used to change the lyrics to, I'd do anything for love, but I won't do that because I'm too fat or something like that. He was a bit porky. He doesn't matter, mate. He shagged millions of buzz, millions. You can't even count that shit. He definitely had a fun life did meatloaf trump called meatloaf a great guy despite their rift their previous history 
MSN.com says former President Trump had only kind words for Meatloaf Friday, even though the pair had a hot and cold relationship dating back to late Rocker's appearance on Celebrity Apprentice. Trump called Meatloaf a great guy who livened up the 2011 edition of the reality show that helped him solidify his TV brand. He was smart, talented, open and warm, Trump said. His success was enormous. We all loved him. Meatloaf will be greatly missed. So rest in peace, Meatloaf. You want to have a little bit of a listen to his song? Well, go onto YouTube and search for I Do Anything For Love. That was his biggest song. It was epic. He was kind of dressed up like the hunchback of Notre Dame, Notre Dame, Notre Dame. And he had this makeup on and shit. And it was operatic looking, which matched well with his operatic voice. And the song is so epic. To someone who's not very good at music theory like me, it seems like black magic, that song. There's so many different sections. It feels like there's an A, B, C, D, maybe even an E section. And the way the song leads into the chorus, it's just teasing you and you know it's coming and it's slowing down and boom, chorus comes in. It's a masterpiece of music theory as far as pop music goes, that song. So make sure you have a look at it over on well, not YouTube, somewhere else because YouTube are massive cunts. In other news for tonight, Netflix plummets over 20% on pace for worst day since July 2012. I'm quite happy about this because I don't like Netflix. On dating sites, there's a few bugbears I have. Women take note. The, the worst thing women can do is say, I like delicious foods. I like eating. I like traveling. I've been to 73 countries, including Zimbabwe and Congo. And I like watching Netflix. Instant fucking swipe left. So thank God Netflix is 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 crumbling. No offense, Netflixes, but personally, I just don't like it. According to CNBC... They say Netflix shares tumbled as much as 24%. 24. Mate, that's a dark day in the Netflix history. 24%, a quarter of its value wiped out after the company quietly admitted that streaming competition was eating into its own growth in its fourth quarter earnings released Thursday. However, Netflix still beat analysts' expectations on user numbers for the quarter and earnings while meeting expectations on revenue. The question of competition is even more crucial given Netflix recently raised prices in its standard plan from $13.99 to $15.99. Nine. So fucking hell, mate. Netflix taking a beating there. Basically, Disney is swinging their big furry Mickey Mouse spotted dick around and eating into their pro- <laughs> eating into their profits badly. Disney's got so much money and has so much intellectual property. I mean, they just bought fucking Fox for fuck's sake. They got aliens, mate. Even I would. No, I would never fucking pay for Disney. But most people would. They basically have everything. And so Netflix is feeling it now. I say fuck them all, you know. They've they've all got their own intellectual property, these these new TV companies, and it's really annoying because if you want to watch everything, you have to have about four or five subscriptions. I say fuck it, just stay tuned to the Johnny Massacre show. I will take care of you. We don't need those cunts. And finally for tonight, the new Batman movie is three hours long. So according to HollywoodReporter.com, Robert Patterson's The Batman runs nearly three hours with credits. That's the longest of any film starring The Dark Knight and one of the longest for any superhero pick playing in theaters behind Avengers Endgame. Matt Reeves' new Batman movie runs two hours and 55 minutes. So yeah, it's fucking long. So I wanted to share that with you and I'm kind of excited about it because if it's a good movie, then you're going to get more of it. It's pretty simple. And Batman's usually more cerebral. There's going to be loads of detective stuff. And a storyline like that usually is going to be quite long. So let's just hope it's fucking good because there's going to be three hours of the thing. Quite interesting. So that will be coming out in March. And guess what, right? You know, Japan, for some reason, we get movies later than anyone else. I don't fucking know why. Japan, supposedly first world country, one of the leading economies, can't translate a movie. Let's have a look at the release dates of The Batman. So 2nd of March, Taiwan, Sweden, France, Belgium, and Argent- and uh, Yeah, that's it. And then 3rd of March, Argentina, Chile, Colombia, Germany, whatnot, Mexico, Italy, blah, blah, blah. 4th of March, Brazil, Canada, Cameroon, Finland, UK. All right. 5th of March, 4th of March also USA, and then 11th of March, slowest of all to get the movie, Japan, where I'm at. Five, fucking six days later than the second latest person, South Korea. Why is that? Why the fuck do movies come out so much later in Japan? It's probably because they're all perfectionists out here. They're going, oh, they're, they're shitting themselves about translating it because it's got to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. 
doesn't have to be perfect. Just fucking release the movie at the same time as everyone else. I have been Johnny Masca, and I tell you what, mate, you better be back for the next episode. Otherwise, I'll be coming around your house. Please make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell and donate generously. Just $475 to go. Can we do it in 10 days? Because that is what all those other cunts tell you to do. Laters.